Hi, this is Jonathan Gardner. This is like my fourth take of Section 753 Maxwell Stress Tensor. Um, I'm breaking this up into smaller bits this time. I just got too excited and tried to film this 25-minute video without any mistakes, and sure enough, there's like 20 mistakes. Anyway, won't waste your time any longer. Um, let's calculate the total of force on charges in a volume V. So that's going to be given by an integral over the volume of the charge density times the electric field at each point inside that volume plus the velocity of those charges at that point cross the B field at that point um, times the volume size right and we could rather easily distribute this rho rho times V it will give us the J and so we're left with this is the integral over some volume of rho E that's Coulomb's law right there hiding in plain sight, plus the current at that point times or across the B vector, D tau. Okay. Um, the inside bit here is the force per unit volume. Okay, and that's given, I'm going to use a curly F for that. Um, I don't think the Greeks had a letter for F, but they did have one for PH, which was like an aspirated P, which some people pronounce like a P. Anyway, um, so that's rho times the electric field plus J cross B. It's just the guts of this integral right here. Let me make that pretty. Okay. If we modify this, if we pull out the rho and J terms to get this as an expression of E and B alone, using um, Gauss's law, we can pull out that rho is equal to um, epsilon naught the gradient of E. So we get epsilon naught the gradient of E vector times E vector. That looks a little funny but we're gonna get used to that. We're gonna see a lot of things that look like that and, and it'll make sense in a minute. And then our J vector, well we just take um, Ampere's law with Maxwell's correction and divide everything by mu naught and we get an equation that solves for J that leaves us with 1 over mu naught b vector uh, curl of b, holy cow, already made a mistake curl of b minus epsilon naught the time derivative of our friendly E field okay and all that is cross b okay so this cross b is there this j vector is all of this guts right here okay um, now we're gonna do some singing and dancing and looking at this term right here makes me wonder what would happen if I took the time derivative of E cross B which is a lot like the pointing vector without the factor of one over U naught so let's do that, let's go over here um, arm on this side now, so D by DT of E vector cross B vector well that's just the, the time derivative of the first cross B plus the first times Cross the time derivative of b. So let me write that out. So we get d by dt of e vector cross b vector plus e vector cross db by dt. db by dt, what could that be? Well, in Faraday's law, that gives us the curl of e, or negative the curl of e. So let's plug that in. Um, well, this is the term that we want to solve for, so keep that in mind. Well, let's do let's write it out. Let's write it out just in case there's any confusion. My job is to eliminate confusion, not create it. Um, tell me how well I'm doing in the comments below. So E vector cross negative the curl of E. Okay, that's kind of weird. So here we have E vector cross the curl of E. Don't worry, it gets a little weirder. Okay, this minus sign, by the way, can just come out. Doesn't have to stick around there. So we can solve for dE by dt of b. dE by dt cross b is equal to this term, which looks a lot like the pointing vector without the factor of one over mu naught. And then we, this guy was on the same side, but he's minus. So he's going to end up being plus if we bring him back to the other side. So E cross 
the curl of E. All right. So we're going to plug this in up here, and I'm quickly running out of room. So let me just write it out here. I should not draw hats before I draw the letter. The F vector in its full and total glory. We have an epsilon naught. We have our uh, divergence of E cross E. So let's write that out. Divergence of E vector times E. Okay. And we have another term. When we plug in here, we have a minus sign. So all of these things end up being negative. So we have this minus d by dt e cross b and a minus e cross the curl of e. Let's make sure I got everything. So we're, we had a factor of epsilon naught here. And that's right there. Okay. That's good to go. And then we have plus 1 over mu naught. And we have the curl of V cross B. But if we reverse terms, so it's B cross the curl of B, then we have something that looks a lot like that. Okay. And then we subtract our epsilon naught D by DT of E vector cross B vector. Okay. I left a hole there. The reason why is because I wanted you to to think for a moment that, you know, if only we put something in that hole, we'd have a very beautiful equation that had a lot of symmetry. And indeed, we can put something in that hole. We can put zero. So I'm going to write zero. There, I just added a zero. Because the divergence of B is zero everywhere until we find a magnetic monopole in which case it's not, but that's okay, this equation would still work. Um, all right, we're not quite done yet. I wanna take a look at this E cross curl of E and B cross the curl of B and simplify that a little bit. And we have in the front part of our book, we have this section that has product rules, at least in the second edition. And if you look for something cross the curl of something, you'll look at product rule number four and go, huh, if I did the gradient of E squared. That would give me 2E cross the curl of E plus 2 of these weird um, E dot nabla E. Okay. Um, we're going to be seeing a lot more of this term around so I'm going to explain it really quick here what this means okay that seems like my kid got a hold of it so not good enough okay let me explain what that means so the dot product is you take the x component of e d e vector dotted with the x component of that vector what's the x component that's d by dx so it's e x e x d by dx plus e y d by dy plus e z d by dz which is a scalar quantity there's no i, j's, or k's in there. And you just multiply all that by each of the components of that e vector um, in each of the directions. Okay. Not really multiplying, you're more applying the operation. So, anyway, um, continuing right along. So, our e cross curl of e is actually, let me write that out, is one half of this del e squared, and then this has to be a minus, minus e vector dot del e vector, okay, because we're dividing everything by two, so this one becomes one half, everything else becomes one. Plug this back into this baby, okay, and I'm going to write it out in the final form on a separate piece of paper here, okay, so we start off with our curly force per unit volume vector. We have our electric terms. We have the divergence of E vector times E vector. Then we have this dude minus the E vector 
dot del e vector. And then finally, we have, was it supposed to be a minus or a plus? I think I got signs wrong. Checking the book, checking the book. Indeed, I did get a sign wrong. This is a plus. The reason why is we're subtracting e cross the curl of e. That's the negative term. So this one becomes negative. This one becomes positive when we apply the negative. So we're in minus 1 half del e squared, okay, plus 1 over mu naught over the divergence of e. I'm sorry, b. We're doing magnetic fields now. v vector, which is 0, plus v vector dot del v vector minus 1 over half the gradient of v squared minus our epsilon naught d by dt e vector cross v vector. Okay? That is the force per unit volume and it's beautiful. Um, the the comment that he has is ugly, and frankly, this is not an ugly equation. There's just so much symmetry here. It's just reeking of symmetry. And there's like, you know, symmetry between these terms, and there's symmetry between these terms, and it's, it's just a beautiful equation. And here's your cross term. You know, when you have something times something, you have to have a cross term, and it's, it's beautiful. Anyway, next section, we'll talk about how we can simplify this equation with some symbols um, that'll involve this new Maxwell stress tensor you're going to learn. And then after that, we're going to learn um, in the example how to actually use these things to solve problems. So next video is a little long because I teach you about tensors for the first time seriously. Um, at the same time, I teach you about, about Maxwell's stress tensor, but I hope you'll have fun watching it. So take care. Goodbye.